country, parents are beginning to see options to the dropout factories. School choice reforms are designed to make sure children get the quality education they deserve. But not everyone supports school choice. It's really the education establishment who fears what will happen when reform does occur. Dr. Tony Bennett is the Indiana Superintendent of Public Instruction and part of the Chiefs for Change, a group that came out of the 2010 Excellence in Education Summit. Its goal is to share reforms that work in schools. It really is incumbent upon us to understand that um, children should not be educated by zip code. Children should not be educated by the amount of money their parents have in their checking and savings accounts. Children should not be educated by whether they, they come from a single parent family, a dysfunctional family, or any other indicator that would make them an at-risk child. Charter schools are one school choice option that is proving all children can learn. A charter is a, is a performance contract uh, that outlines in it uh, expectations for academic performance, expectations for financial performance, and expectations for governance performance and consequences if those things aren't done as expected. Dan Quisenberry is the president of the Michigan Association of Public School Academies. He says parents are demanding school choice. They want individualized plans for their children and they want high quality teaching staff engaged. And then they do, they want performance uh, in those schools. So uh, when we, again, we create a system where those are happening in individual schools. Parents don't care what the label is, traditional public, charter public, faith-based. They want that kind of a school. But many teachers unions are against all school choice options, including charter schools. Research shows that unionized schools are more stable than schools that are not unionized. That's Marilyn Stewart, the former head of the Chicago Teachers Union. She says the CTU will only support unionized charter schools. Now the reason most charter schools are successful is because they are not unionized. Picture a charter school being like Toyota opening a plant in the U.S. Toyota isn't weighed down by union contracts. They're free to make policies that increase productivity and profit. Same with charter schools. They're free from union negotiated contracts, giving them the power and flexibility to put students first. It's not about the adults. It's about whether students are learning or not. And we ought to create an environment where those interests are the highest priority and adult interests come after that. But Keith Johnson, president of the Detroit Federation of Teachers, continues to support a system that makes adults the number one priority. In a May 2009 newsletter, Johnson said the DFT does not support charter schools and or the expansion of charter schools. Charter schools continue to be a drain upon our school district as more and more parents begin to turn to charter schools as an alternative for the education and safety of their children. He said organizing charters will also allow us to pursue tenure and just cause due process rights for charter school teachers. Most important of all, he said, organizing charters will strengthen our power influence as a union. In 1989, Albert Shanker, a former president of the American Federation of Teachers, said, It's time to admit that public education operates like a planned bureaucratic system in which everybody's role is spelled out in advance and there are few incentives for innovation and productivity. It's no surprise that our school system doesn't improve. It more resembles the communist economy than our own market economy. But still, teachers unions resist charter schools. If you open ABC Charter, and let's say ABC Charter is going to be a K through 5 school, and they decide we're going to have tw 20 classrooms with 20 students, that's 400 children. When that 401st child comes up to enroll in ABC, ABC has the latitude to say, well, I'm sorry, we're at our capacity. DPS doesn't have that luxury. We have to ev educate every child within our domain. Then along with that, ABC Charter admits this child, Keith Johnson. And then after the fourth Wednesday count, Keith's mother is called into the principal's office and told, well, Ms. Johnson, Keith just doesn't seem to fit into what we're trying to do here at ABC Charter, so we think he'd be better off in his neighborhood school. But they get to keep the money. That money doesn't accompany Keith back to a Detroit public school, but yet the, the Detroit public school still has to educate them. Traditional schools take all kids, charter schools take all kids, the numbers, though, don't back up with 
what Mr. Johnson is saying, and it's a common myth. Um, I've heard that from a variety of people. Four hundred, two to 400 kids a year out of 84, 85,000 that are in the Detroit public school system go back after count day from a charter school. That's Michigan Department of Education statistics. Second, Michigan law ensures that the Detroit Public School District on a pro rata basis gets the foundation grant for any child that comes from any public school back to Detroit Public after count day. So number one, the facts don't justify it, don't back it up. Second, for those that do, they get paid for them. It's an absolute myth. 10 G, 10, 145. Charter schools in Indiana have um, set enrollment uh, targets per grade and they, they have an open enrollment period by law and they take applications from all types of students and if more students enroll than they have or apply to enroll in the school than they have available seats then by law all the students go into a lottery uh, just as you would expect like a Friday night bingo and draw out the numbers and, and the students go in there and then they uh, establish waiting lists uh, based on the number, um, the order of the number that the people were, were drawn. And um, in Indiana, we have, um, at the, last year, we had 4,000 kids on waiting lists for a seat in a public charter school. And um, any effort to um, put a moratorium or caps on more charter schools just abandons hope for those families. Families in one of the poorest areas of Indianapolis now have hope for their children. It uh, routinely is ranked number one in terms of the most police, police calls of any neighborhood um, in the city of Indianapolis. It um, once was a very prosperous part of the city that um, was absolutely blighted when we came to this neighborhood eight years ago. As Marcus Robinson, the president of Charles A. Tinley Accelerated Academy, a publicly funded charter school. And so I just plug that in. And if you want, you can do this as a separate step. Today, students fill the classroom of what once was an old grocery store. Here at Tinley, the focus is college prep. I think there are a great many reasons why uh, the kids at Tinley succeed. The, the fact that we're willing to extend from a time perspective to serve kids, whether that's extending the day, extending the week, because we, we're here on Saturday mornings, um, or extending the year, you just have to meet kids at their point of need in terms of time, and some of our kids who come in behind, they just need a lot of time. Kids that other schools have given up on are successful at Tinley. Our kids come to us two or three grade levels behind. Our mission is to get them prepared for selective college admissions by the time that they finish. So if we're going to make that happen, then we have to invest more time. Students believe they will go to college. When I get older, um, for college I'm planning to first go IUPUI for my first four years, then go to Spelman, and I'm going to study to be a judge, but then I have to study at first to be a lawyer. But I think I can do it because I'm a fair person. and. I know how to get the job done. Jocelyn is in the eighth grade. She came from another charter school to attend Tenley. Her parents wanted the best for their daughter. Well, they chose Tenley because they heard about it everywhere, about it being accelerated, and they told me about all the, per all the perks of the school. So that kind of made me happy. Plus, the school that I was going to at the moment, it was kind of basic primary, so it felt good to move up in the world. Some of the work is more... I don't know, hard, but it gives me higher goals to reach for. And then the teachers, they just care more. They stay after school, they give us higher extents, and they just make sure they, to their best abilities that we can get the best education we can. The school's mantra is college or die, and that's what made many choose Tinley. Well, actually, I decided to go to Tinley. Trevor told his parents he wanted more from school. At first, they were like, it's not in our school district, so I don't know how it's going to work out but they worked it out. As Trevor sits in a classroom, he says Tinley beats his expectations. My attitude as far as learning, it would be very different because I needed this type of discipline in order to get an education because at other schools they're not as strict as Tinley. But I see why being very disciplinary towards other students is helpful towards education. You know, there are a lot of high schools that don't uh, provide uh, a opportunity where you could get college credit for free. 
You know, in, in most cases you have to pay for it, but here at Tinley you get college, uh, you take, uh, we take four class, early college uh, classes, and if we get a B or higher, then we get early college credit. Not only is Tinley committed to accelerated learning, they have something called the Early College Program. My parents decided to bring me to Tinley because they've always been interested in an early college program. Uh, you know, the ideal situation where you can get college credit early, you get done with high, uh, college early, and also just be overall prepared for college. He left a private school to attend Tinley. Since coming to Tinley, I've learned that your competition isn't just you, who's next to you, your competition isn't just in Indiana, your competition isn't just in America, but it's overseas now. Though I've learned that the world has become more global, and so as we go through school, Tinley has taught me that you have to always not compare yourself to students who are in your classroom or in the country, but who, students who are around the entire world because now they're becoming more interested in uh, colleges in America. Mason says one day he'll be a successful entrepreneur. I think that my chances will highly improve because Tinley has showed me more than just the educational aspect of, of life, but also um, bonding, how to network, how to plan, business planning, financial planning, how to budget everything that you uh, make money-wise. And so I do think that in the future, I will be very successful. And Tinley ha has become a big part of why I've become successful. Next five years, um, so I'll be done with college. Hopefully, I'm applying to either medical school or law school. Um, I really like the idea of working in the government, so I would like to work probably in the healthcare aspect of government. But if not, if I don't go into law school, then I'm, if I'm doing medical school, I'll probably go into research. A day also came from a private school. My mom really liked the mantra of college or die. She was she's always been adamant about me getting, receiving a good education and. The fact that the school is based on the premise of going to college is something that we have always looked for. She says here they not only prepare you for college, but also to enter the workforce. Well, I'm more respectful. Um, I, I don't always have, I don't feel the need to have like a friend buddy relationship with my teachers. Rather, I have more of a, it's more of a teacher student re relationship where they're teaching me something. I need this concept to get where I want to go. At Tinley, they expect a lot from their students and their parents, and they get it. The charter school is among the top 25 schools in Indiana. They have to perform at a level that may be uncommon for them as students. We ask them to behave in a certain way. We ask their parents to respond, to uh, not just check on their homework, but to make sure that it's done and it comes back to school, to sign their progress reports on a weekly basis indicating that they are following their students' progress as uh, well as we are. And then we as a school say, we're going to move heaven and earth to try to move this child. If they need extra support, we're going to provide that extra support. To eliminate drop-off factories, some say more school choice is needed. And we should have a culture that where the adults get up every day and say, what are we doing to promote our children and to provide them what they need? Giving parents choice in education is the difference between a successful child and a child that has no tools to achieve their dreams. This is one of nine films in the Kids Aren't Cars series. To see them all, go to kidsaren'tcars.com.